this John Morant news, like we can't have nice things anymore, I guess. There are four big reasons why this news is just absolutely devastating. One is that it came out of nowhere. Usually when a guy has a season ending injury, it comes after the injury, right? A Tyrese Halliburton is sort of an unfortunate, perfect example. I hope he's gonna be okay, but you know, last night he got hurt. He sort of like, like did something to his hamstring and it sort of gets us in the mindset of, oh, this might be something bigger that we're gonna find out later versus Ja, like, I didn't know he hurt his shoulder over the weekend, I had no idea. And then all of a sudden, I just see a flurry of tweets from Shams, from Woj, from Chris Haynes saying how Ja Morant is out for the year after shoulder surgery. Why did he even need shoulder surgery? It was so unexpected and I think I'm still processing it because of that. Second reason why it sucks is because I like watching awesome players and Ja Morant is one of the most awesome, exciting players to watch in the NBA and just on a very basic level of enjoying basketball, like it sucks that we're not gonna be able to watch one of the most exciting players in the NBA for the rest of the season. Third reason it sucks is because we all just went through this sort of spiritual revival after John Moran's 25 game suspension, where I think we all sort of said to ourselves like, wow, like I I'm really gonna appreciate John Moran even more like knowing what it was like when he was out with the suspension and then he came back and immediately had that great game capped off by the game winner in New Orleans. Like, wow, like I'm really gonna appreciate him. I have such a greater appreciation for him, for greatness, for the superstars we have in the NBA. We all felt that and then just immediately got snatched from us again. And now we have to wait many, many more months to watch John Morant again and that sucks. And the fourth reason why it sucks is because it really cements this as a wasted season for the Grizzlies. I don't really know what their ceiling was considering the hole they had dug themselves in uh, during Jaws suspension, but they were six and three in the games he played in. Like things were starting to look up. I definitely could have seen a scenario where like, you know, if they get into the plan and they win the plan tournament, secure the seventh or eighth seed, like they definitely could have been that, oh, no team is gonna wanna face them as the higher seed. Like they could have been that team that higher seeds want to avoid. And now that's done for it. And it's particularly unfortunate because it, it speaks to something I talked about in my video talking about the OKC Thunder and like whether or not they should make an all-in trade, which is that like this stuff never lasts as long as you think it does, or you never have as many cracks at the title as you think you will. And the Grizzlies are sort of like a really great example where a couple years ago, they take the Warriors six games. John Morant goes down that series. Oh, when Jaw played, like we would've won that series and then who would've knows what would've happened against Dallas. Their future looks so bright. They have the superstar in John Morant. They have like these great pieces around them, namely Jaron Jackson Jr. and Desmond Bain. They're really looking like they're building something. They're really looking like they're gonna be like one of the teams of the future. And then you look at these last couple of years, Last year, they lose Steven Adams for the year. They lose Brandon Clark. That's where sort of the off-court troubles with John Morant started, the Dylan Brooks saga. All of that culminated in the first round loss to LA. And then this year, John Morant with the suspension. Now John Morant, you know, missing the rest of the season. Again, you don't know how many chances with a certain core, within a certain era, that you're going to have to maximize it. So to see one of them for the Grizzlies at a time where, you know, John Morant is a superstar. Desmond Bain showed really great flashes um, of like increased scoring last year and even this year taking on a large role. Jaron Jackson Jr. is the reigning defensive player of the year. We talk a lot about being able to strike while the iron is hot. Well, the iron is scalding hot for the Grizzlies right now. And so to see one of these seasons go to waste is really unfortunate because who knows what the future holds for this team. Obviously, silver lining, Grizzlies will get a high draft pick. That'll help them some way or another, whether they choose to keep the pick and, and draft a guy and, and hope to develop them, or maybe they'll trade the pick for some more win now approach. It's just unfortunate. It's unfortunate on an individual level for Ja, who I think has obviously gone through so much over this past year and change. It sucks for Grizzlies fans who have really enjoyed this era of Grizzlies basketball and really think that it could be something special. And it sucks for the collective NBA because we really like watching Ja, we really like watching Ja try and carry the Grizzlies to something special. And now that's gone. And now like one of the best pieces of the NBA uh, is gone for the year. And that's unfortunate. And yeah, nothing really more to say than that.